Hey, I'm Con. My name is Lori. I lead marketing for American Contingency, and I have a really great story to share with you tonight. Um, I have two of our members that traveled across the country with the help of other AMCOM members. We have Alex and Janice. I'm bringing you guys on right now. There we go. Um, Alex and Janice, hello. It's so nice to meet you both. Hello. Nice Hi. to meet you, too. Hi. Pleasure. Pleasure to meet you. You know, I got a I got a text from uh, the Southwest Region Coordinator, and he said that he had a really great story for me, and then he he pointed me to you, and um, so I'm really excited. I heard like little bits and pieces, but I'm really excited to hear about your move from um, from Long Beach, right? You were in Long Beach, California. Correct. Yeah, I'm I'm very familiar with it because I had a sister in Seal Beach, and um, which is right next door. You could like throw a throw a rock to it. And um, when I lived in when I lived in Arizona. We traveled there regularly to see her and uh, be near the ocean, of course. So um, yeah, so I, I'm familiar with that. And then, so what what happened was you moved to Texas. Is that right? That's correct. Uh, I convinced my company that I would be better suited uh, for the organization in Texas. Uh, they signed off on it, and uh, they sent me on my merry way. Uh, and that's after spending um, 20 plus years in Long Beach. Uh, I was active duty Coast Guard, uh, started in the Bay on a 378, um, did my tour in uh, Alaska, Southeast Asia, South America. Uh, then I got hurt uh, while I was in the Coast Guard during a boarding. Uh, so I went through a medical board in San Diego um, and they pulled my sea time. They offered me an office job and then I told them, see you later. And I ended up in Long Beach uh, and was there for about 16 years before it uh, just got too much uh, to bear on my soul. Uh, and then uh, we started to make plans to get out. My father had such a stellar career in the Air Force. And when I was going, before I was going off to boot camp, uh, I was in his office uh, when he was the airfield director at the academy. And the commandant of the Air Force Academy was in his office and, you know, he was a proud father and he's like, oh, my son's joining the Coast Guard. And the commandant looked at me at the time and he said, son, your dad had such a stellar career in the Air Force. What are you doing joining the Coast Guard? And I said, well, sir, there are more planes in the ocean than there are boats in the sky. So I figured it was a safer service. And uh, <laughs> he kind of gave me a chuckle, threw me his command coin and, uh, and he sent me on my merry way. Oh, oh that's great. <laughs> All right, so how did you guys first hear about AMCON and how long have you been members? Uh, so I joined AMCON in January of uh, 2023. Um, and I was always into being prepared and thinking of worst case scenario. Um, and then I saw this uh, piece uh, with Mike Glover talking about how the FBI came after him for just organizing people and getting them together. And instead of uh, getting scared of joining up, I started to do a little bit more research. And as I started reading about the profile and what AMCON truly did as an organization, I said, man, that's, uh, that's the organization for me. And that's a group that I would really like to, uh, to sign up for. So yeah, I, I rolled the dice, I signed up, I, went through the vetting process and um, I became an active uh, member uh, after that. Your, your group in Orange County, uh, what, how often did you meet and what sort of things did you do? Um, I believe we met uh, monthly, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. um, but we uh, kept an open line of communication where we were passing information back and forth um, uh, daily. Um, we ran uh, a ton of FTXs. Um, we did an earthquake FTX, um, which was, uh, I think, about an eight hour, six hour event. We set up comms in a park. We had uh, different locations to navigate to with um, uh, different, um, different things you had to do, whether it be a first aid or you know, apply a tourniquet to someone in need. Um, and we did uh, stuff like that uh, all the time. Uh, we've had uh, speakers uh, come and talk to the group about different uh, subject matters, um, and they brought in different specialists to come speak to us. Um, we had um, 
you know, great just barbecues, uh, sitting down and, and not even talking about work and just bonding together. Uh, and then we actually had an event, I believe it was in Ojai, where um, a community member had their farm washed out. Mm -hmm. And this was on Martin Luther King's birthday. Um, I actually had the day off and I was like, you know what, I, I signed up uh, uh, to be a responder with AMCON. So I, I made a two hour drive just to go assist. And I sat there all night shoveling mud and doing our, uh, my best uh, to my skills uh, to help out. And then the following weekend, I actually took Janice with me uh, during the day after it kind of dried up a little bit to try to help with, uh, uh, just to help the gentleman kind of like rebuild and try to get his hands, uh, get back on those feet. Oh, that's great. It sounds like another story. <laughs> You've got a few of them. Yes. <laughs> so, it, so it sounds like you can really speak to the benefits. I mean, you just did of meeting face to face versus online. And so it seems like you just jumped in, you and Janice both just jumped in like, you know, two feet in and it sounds like you had a really great group there. So that that's wonderful. Um, tell me about, tell me about um, how you planned your, you told me a little bit off camera about um, your move and why you moved. If you could just tell us that and um, how that came to happen and then how Amcon ended up getting involved in helping you, you know, make the, make the trip. Yeah, so um, we actually had a, a baby shower uh, and we, there was an Amcon baby shower. I, I think oh. I had more baby showers uh, than Janice <laughs> yeah. did. So. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> we That's were, wonderful. <laughs> that was the only baby shower that the pregnant lady wasn't there. <laughs> well, we were throwing lead down range, so we figured it was safe if she wasn't there. But um, oh, yeah, because yeah, you know the baby, the baby can't protect his ears, right? That's right. <laughs> so, um, so we uh, we actually were just you know hanging out at the baby shower, talking, and. Um, the uh, Southwest coordinator uh, reached out and was like, hey, you're driving. I'm going to put together a travel package for you, a comms package. And uh, what he did was actually phenomenal. Um, he uh, gathered key personnel uh, through the different states we were going to travel through. Uh, we let them know our, our route. Um, we, plant, we plotted it out on a map. and. Uh, he actually had points of contacts at every location where we were going to stop. And uh, this was important because, uh, like I mentioned earlier, I, I am a disabled vet. And um, during the whole moving, I, uh, I blew out my back while we were setting up for the uh, movers to come. And then after we got everything on board and we got underway on the road trip, uh, my back actually went completely out when we got to New Mexico. Uh, all Albuquerque. that driving, probably. Yeah, and it was really bad when we got to Albuquerque. Uh, Janice was ready to call nine one one because I, I literally couldn't get in the bed. So um, uh, we made it through the night. Uh, we got up, and then Janice got a crash course in towing <laughs> in the snow. <laughs> Heavy rain, snow, and this was with the baby, a dog, and mom. <laughs> oh wow. And so you had never towed, would you have like, obviously it's a tow vehicle, it's a pretty big truck probably. Well, I was driving my 1500 and I was towing her personal vehicle behind us. Um, so um, the, the great thing about that is uh, when we got to the Albuquerque, Texas border, um, there was a gentleman uh, from the Texas chapter that was actually uh, an emergency room um, staff member and they were really giving me pointers. I was telling them like just the, the pain meds I was taking. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think I was taking too much of something that I shouldn't have. And he was like, stop it. Uh, you're going to tell your liver up. And he gave me an alternative. Uh, so once we stopped at a gas station, I was able to get uh, something different to take uh, to handle the pain and the and the muscle spasms. And uh, that really helped out. So it was important, you know, we had, um, during the route, we were notified uh, best route to take, uh, what to avoid, um, different sections of Albuquerque where you didn't want to stop at uh, due to the native land um, and how uh, the tribal regions kind of mess with uh, Americans, um, 
once they get onto their soil. So it was it was really key uh, to have that information. It was great food for thought. So like that helped us like plan out our fuel consumption, when we're going to fuel, when we're going to stop and eat, what to watch out for. Um, And it was just great uh, food for thought that really assisted us in making uh, good decisions while we were transiting. And how fortuitous that that there was like a, an, Am, an AMCOM member that was like an, an ER doc? Is that what you said? I think he's an ER uh, nurse, if I'm not nurse? mistaken. Wow. Yes. That, that's incredible. Wow. That, that's, God that's is great, incredible. and he works in mysterious ways. Yeah, yeah, for sure. He, he does provide, doesn't he? Just when Absolutely. you need it the most. <laughs> Yes. Well, well, yeah, that, that's really an amazing story. I, I love it. Um, and, and from what I understand, there were at one point, like, I think 30 people involved in um, either helping in some way or guiding you along the way. So that, that's a wonderful story. It, it um, was amazing. Like people were giving, once they found out uh, that I wasn't feeling well, uh, we had AMCON members in the local areas and they were like, okay, you know, we did a check in every hour uh, and I would give my location and members were in that area would say, OK, if it gets really bad, this is the closest hospital. Right. OK, uh, you're going to keep on going like they provided uh, so much information that was so fruitful and had uh, my back take a, a, an even worse turn. We felt like we were prepared to uh, make a call and we had good directions to get to help. Oh, nice. And, and they had everything complete with a comms package, routing. Um, it, it was completely lined up. Did you use Zello at all or uh, mostly Signal? Uh, we had Z- uh, Zello as a backup. Uh, we uh, communicated through Signal. Um, and then I had my GMRS radio. And then obviously my sat phone was my emergency uh, contingency. Oh, nice. You have a sat phone. That's sweet. We should Better all have to have them and not have. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. So, Janice, what was it like uh, driving a trailer in that kind of weather? I mean, if you've never driven a trailer before, um, I can just imagine it's, I mean, it's a whole different thing, especially if you need to stop, right? And you need to find a place where you can turn around or get in and out uh, properly. What was that like? It was an experience, a very, you need to learn this lesson quick type of a scenario. Otherwise, you're not going anywhere. But it's pretty much getting thrown into the pool and you either just sink or swim. So I, I thread a water pretty okay. It's the, you're right, it's the stopping that you just, I couldn't get a, a feel for it. Just we were few times that I was too late on the sobs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I have a good brake package on the truck, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> that helped out. Well, it was nice having him next to me, even though he was in pain and just was not happy. And to just have him next to me and like, okay, giving me directions. <laughs> so I've, that I've, helped. I felt bad. I, I snapped a few times, but not just because I was in so much pain. I, um, yeah, I did the apologize. stress will do it. Yeah. Oh, you're apologizing yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I usually apologize to him because it's kind of like I did the same thing when I was going into labor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was well, not myself. Go. I snapped so many times. I was pretty bossy. Yeah. So like, it, oh, it even sad. Pain will do that to you. I, it I, I mean, does. You know, I think uh, Janice has got a good uh, background. You know, she comes from hardship. Um, she's a diver. Um, so that's pretty stressful in itself. And it's very meticulous in your movements. Um, so I've had nothing but faith in her ever since I met her. She's just been a, a great partner. And I'm just so blessed uh, to have a family with her. So, Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> And so your your baby is only a month old in this trip. And this was just two weeks ago, right? Yeah, we got here on the 24th of January. So yeah. he was a little over a month old. And, and how, uh, did, how did he it, do on the trip? Um, he was good for the most part. Towards the end, he started to get a little 
uh, uneasy. Yeah, I mean, after 10, 11 hours in the car, anybody would. So overall, we were pretty impressed how well he did. We were lucky. I mean, we had the newborn, we had our dog, and then we had Janice's mom with us. So she was sitting in the back with the baby. And at times when she needed to pull him out real quick to console him and to give him a little love, and she was able to do so and then get him back into his seat safely. Yeah, nice. So that help a lot. So I think, he, and especially when he couldn't drive, so she would take care of the baby. I would drive, and Alex would just was hanging on to <laughs> dear life <laughs> in the passenger seat, <laughs> saying a lot of prayers. I'm sure. <laughs> I was manning the comms. I was manning the comms. Yeah. So, so it was um, an event. Sure, going through snow and rain, a monsoon, two monsoons, and three snowstorms. Yeah, where we couldn't see what 100 feet ahead. Yeah, it was bad. Yeah, it, I've never been on that kind of weather roads, but it's we did it. <laughs> yeah, well, thankfully, we you arrived safely. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, I, I honestly believe that if um, we didn't have the support that we had through Amcon. Um, that drive would have been a lot longer. We would have made uh, a whole bunch of different decisions. Right. Um, we wouldn't have felt uh, at ease uh, like we did. Um, when we were driving, knowing that we had that type of support, we were confident uh, in what we were doing. And we were confident knowing that worst case scenario, there's a solid group of people that are um, you know, a phone call away, a text away uh, that would literally drop what they're doing to come out and assist. And um, I, like I said earlier, uh, what, when there was a call out for assistance during my first event, um, you know, I always believe that you pay it forward. You know, you, you, you put out uh, good stuff into the atmosphere and it, and it comes back to you. So I think um, maybe that was God uh, repaying me for my generosity and my kindness and my time willing to help other uh, AMCON members in the time of need. So it, uh, it's, it's really a full circle and it comes back. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's really what AMCON is all about. It's, it's been an amazing organization and I wish I would have joined uh, years ago. Um, it's really how I like and how Janice likes to live our lifestyle, you know, being prepared, meeting like-minded people. Um, and, you know, um, it, it takes a community to survive uh, worst case scenarios. Um, so having um, a community like that, um, I think that's why it's really important to meet face to face. You can read someone's bio and see what their background is and that's fine and dandy. But when you get face to face, you really get a, a sense of trust um, in that person. Uh, you really get to feel their, their vibes and see what they're about. And, you know, and you get to consume their knowledge uh, and their expertise and really build off of that. So I think it's really important um, for members to be active in their uh, local communities, your AMCON communities, try to attend events, um, go put the face to the email or the text and really build that rapport with each other. Because in worst case scenarios, if, if you don't have that trust, um, it's never gonna work out, so. That's yeah, very true. Say, it's the same thing with diving. It's like you have to trust your partner, your buddy to do whatever it takes in an emergency. And if it's not that there's no trust, you don't go diving with that person. Mm -hmm. I think that's the what I lost when I when I left the service. You know, I, I had been through, you know, all these crazy scenarios with these people. But like I knew without a doubt that if stuff hit the fan like i knew i could count on these people um and you you build that through interaction and training and uh going through the motions so right it, it, it's it's going to be impossible for people that think they're going to be able to build these relationships after the you know what hits the fan it there yes, won't be time right. to do it at that point at that point we'll be like there's the trusted ones and then there's everybody else <laughs> There's a saying that we had in the military, it's, you know, a train in peace, so there's less casualty in war. So um, mm -hmm. I, I firmly believe in that. Awesome. Well, I couldn't, I couldn't have said it better. Thank you so much for those words. Or, and it really is the heart of, of AMCON, and we appreciate you sharing with us.
So, um, all right. So I think we'll, we will wrap it up and I really appreciate both of you getting on camera. Um, this is Alex and Janice with American Contingency sharing their travel story. And we thank you guys and we'll see you around the network. Thank you, everybody. Thank Go you. get out and train. Meet your local chapters. Get out there. Be Thank active. You. It'll just make uh, this whole experience a thousand times better. And you'll be thankful for it. Amen.